Yeah, hello everyone and welcome to the Motic Global Conference 2024 and this is another session, uh, I think it's the second day and uh, it's the last session of the day also. Uh, I'll welcome the Matthias uh, uh, into the stage. Uh, so let me introduce you to introduce about the Matthias, right? Matthias is from the Germany and he has owned his own company since 25 years, that's pretty great number. Uh, before email marketing got very common, he has already developed his text message uh, software and he used the Motic since about eight years. As he mentioned, right, he was uh, he has running the like uh, Motic Monday at the time, uh, currently with the AK is uh, like like that. Uh, so by this way, like I'll I'll hand over to the Matis and stage is yours, Matis. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, <laughs> um, I will switch to my PowerPoints. One second. Okay. <clears throat> okay. They are shown. So, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today already um, had this talk in German and now the version in English. I hope you can understand my uh, German English. <laughs> and if you have a question at the end, of course, uh, just um, uh, tell me. Um, some of the screenshots uh, will be in German, but um, everywhere where it's necessary to understand the German, I will explain it. So uh, I think it's no problem if you can't speak German. Okay. So today I show you how Mautic um, shows you how and yeah, who, or who and when you should also call during postal mailings. So I will introduce you to a concrete uh, practical example, including um, also some practical result figures. Uh, very briefly about me, um, in the introduction, <laughs> um, so it was already told, I have been an IT entrepreneur for 25 years with various companies. So um, yeah, a long time ago, I, I offered IT services and then when cell phones began to spread slowly in 2004 in Germany, I founded an SMS marketing company. So um, similar to email marketing and, and we, we, we sent uh, several million SMS messages uh, for companies every month uh, in the following years. And that was before the iPhone came onto the market 2007 and just as SMS message no longer play a role in private communication today, there are still very useful cases, um, for example, for SMS today and our customer who use uh, um, most modern online marketing tools um, always have also business processes where SMS is still very important and useful. And since I have a lot to do with modern online marketing, um, I keep hearing statements like technology uh, XYZ is no longer used today. And I see it a little bit different. I'm a fan of concrete practical numbers. So I like to test things in practice. And when I have numbers, I make my further decisions. And I will introduce you to just such a practical example, including numbers today. So um, I have been using Mautic since about eight years for my companies and also for my customers, um, mainly in Germany. So um, I, um, I have, especially for small companies in Germany, um, who want to implement online marketing, um, they can book a package uh, at my company um, to get the technical things like Mautic, WordPress, or the consulting. But I think um, if you're interested, you will uh, find me. You can contact me um, using my website. And um, here is my website is onlinebusinessduplicator.de. And perhaps, um, if somebody here is listening um, and is from Germany, um, I, last year I also created a book, but it's in German. So if you're um, listening in English, it doesn't make sense for you. But at the end of this presentation, if you're interested and you can speak uh, uh, German, you can get my book for free. But okay, um, um, the, the, the subtitle of this book uh, fits very well as a transition to my presentation today. Because in Germany, we have a saying, it means um, the beginning is no honey licking. This is um, similar to um, because the beginning is not a walk in the park. Um, the fact, fact that you can see a jar of honey on, the, on this book in my, in my slide here also has to do something um, 
with what I will uh, or, or what I'm doing in my free time. So um, if you're not thinking, um, what does these bees have to do with Mautic and online marketing? Um, well, during Corona, I became a hobby beekeeper, um, somewhat unplanned. And the Mautic practical example, what I'm showing today is all also related to this. So if beekeepers take the honey away from the bees, so that you can spread it on your breakfast bed. Then as a beekeeper, you have to give the bees food again at the, at the end of the summer in exchange for the stolen honey. So a special uh, sugar syrup needs to be, be fed to the bees so that they can build up new supplies for the winter. So without bee feeding, they cannot survive the winter. So every beekeeper has to buy bee food. Don't worry, we are still at the Mordicon here and, and um, not at a beekeeping training course. Um, I just tell you a few more backgrounds for about one minute so that you can better understand my practical Mordic example today. So each bee colony needs around uh, 20 kilos of beef feed per year. And this is normally sold in 28 kilo uh, dis disposable boxes. They have a big plastic bag. Um, like you might know from large apple juice cartoons. So 28 kilo are quite heavy to carry, relatively expensive, produce a lot of waste and are not sustainable. In Rasa small beekeeping club or in my Rasa small beekeeping club in Germany, we have about 70 members and we order the food together um, for all members every year. So every year we need approximately almost five tons, so 5,000 kilos of bee food. And um, that's 180 disposable boxes, so a huge amount of garbage. And since I organized the uh, collective order in our club last year, I thought this year there has to be a better way. And so a little bit fun fact, and so completely unplanned, Another, another business model emerged, which is, of course, also supported by Mortic. So a tanker truck brings five tons of bee food here. I mean, 5,000 kilos, which um, are then pumped into a mobile tank. And using an automatic filling system, the food is then filled into a reusable canister or buckets. Um, this is much uh, more sustainable, cheaper, and also uh, I have a new company where I earn money from. But um, now enough from, from the beekeeping project. This, this was only that you understand um, here my postcard a little bit better because this is in German. And precisely for this additional business, um, you see now the postcard from a Mautic practical example. It's in German language, but to understand the campaign, the text of the postcard is not important for you. So. Um, don't worry if you don't speak uh, German. <laughs> and in uh, my opinion, there are two very important basic questions in every post mail campaign. First, which recipient received the postcard and responded to it? And how many euros does a lead or a customer cost me? So um, I can clearly measure the response rate in a test, ma test mailing campaign to a small number of recipients and also how many leads or new customer I have generated. Then I can also calculate how many euros a lead or a customer costs me um, based on the costs of the mailing. This gives me a clear basic um, or a clear basis for decision whether it makes um, it makes business sense to send the mailing to a larger number of recipients. In order to get these questions answered, there are two ways for the recipient to respond to the postcard. First uh, is a, a QR code that you can see, uh, that you can scan with your smartphone. And for recipients who are unable to scan the QR code at the moment or, or in general, there is a short link. So in the example, um, the mehrinfos, uh, .de, um, this, this domain means more infos, please. So more mehr infos, please. And after this, the uh, PR1365. And this is a unique tracking link per recipient. 
Um, this means that on every postcard, there is a link with a different number at the end. Using this number, Mordic can later show me exactly which postcard recipient scanned the QR code or accessed the link in the browser. The QR code is slightly different than the printed link. This means that it contains the letters QR before the code PA1365. Um, I used two different links so that I could, um, could later see whether a recipient scanned the QR code or typed the printed link. The postcards themselves were first designed without personalizations, um, so without a receiver and without the QR code and link that is unique per postcard. Um, I then had the postcards printed at an online printing company. I think in every country um, there should be some similar. Um, and, and now I needed a way to print the postcards with the re um, respective recipient address in the personalized QR code and link. Um, I think in, in, in each country there are many service providers that send postal mailings. But in Germany, um, at the time I wanted to send my mailing, I couldn't uh, quickly find a service provider that prints personalized QR code. So everybody prints a, a QR code on a postcard, but normally it's the same on each postcard. So I had to program a small script for this and the result can be seen here. Uh, on the left side, you see that the PDF has um, a few hundred pages. So on page, um, one page per recipient. Um, the respective page only contains the recipient address and the personalized QR code and link. This PDF with a few hundred pages was then uh, simply printed on the postcards that had um, already been received from the, from the printing company. Um, I have now found in Germany a way for an online printing company uh, to print the postcards completely with my specified uh, personalization. Uh, this means that if you are living in Germany or if you are doing it in Germany, um, I think I, I can recommend now a company uh, so that it's not necessary to, um, to do every step what I show you here. But um, this way is very good and it works uh, with, without that you need a special um, company for this. Okay, and to generate the personalized PDF, I used a simple CSV file um, as basis, um, which contained the recipient addresses and the personalized link for the QR code and the link. Um, then I needed a way to redirect the recipient to the correct destination URL, depending on whether uh, they scan the QR code or type types a link in the browser. So the link above, uh, above mehr infos bitte um, should redirect to the destination URL shown below. This is um, where Mautic comes into play. So using the URL parameter PMA1365, um, um, when I use this parameter, I inform the target website and thus also Mautic um, of the address number that was used with the postcard. So the address number always remains the same, even if I later send other mailings by post um, yeah, to the recipient. <clears throat> so that I know um, which post make campaign the recipient responded to, um, there is a lead parameter. The value PA1 transmitted here um, then tells me that the recipient responded to postcard campaign one. I can also use this value later to, to redirect the recipient to a different target URL, depending on the lead parameter. Um, then I use the parameter QR um, yes to know that the recipient has visited the URL via uh, QR code. Um, to do this, this particularly redirection using um, or to, to, to get this working. It's a little bit technical, um, but if you're interested uh, how I, I did it, um, in my company, we use Engine as Engine X as web server for our customers, so not Apache. And for the redirection, I adapted the host file for the domain 
mehr Infos bitte, .de, accordingly. <coughs> so I installed a so-called rewrite rule there. This means that if the domain is called with the parameter PA1, then the rule takes everything that comes after PA1, each is a digits in my case, and stores them in the um, variable uh, number one. Then the redact uh, redirection takes place to the correct target domain and URL. So the structure of the link is then uh, um, adjusted accordingly so that Mautic can do something with it. Then I have almost the same URL, uh, URL um, for um, when somebody enters the letter PA in capital letters. And another separate rule is uh, specially for postcard recipients who scan the QR code. Um, so the, the parameter QR, yes, is appended to this, which I will later um, yeah, show you in, in Mautic where, is, where it's used. Um, if you're now wondering why I choose um, as a domain mehr infos bitte on the postcard and in the QR code, um, I wanted to make sure that I could safely track every reaction to receiving um, the postcard in Mautic. So technically, of course, I could um, also encode the actual target URL into the QR code. Um, here it is unlikely that the postcard recipient will access a URL other than the target URL. Um, however, I didn't want to print the entire long destination URL on the postcard itself, um, simply because um, this would have um, massively reduced um, the likelihood that someone, uh, someone who, who doesn't want or, or can't use the QR code would type out the long uh, entire URL with all the parameters. Here it would be more likely that the recipient would only type uh, mobile bienenfutter tankstelle.de and leaving out the rest. Then my Mautic uh, wouldn't notice anything and that would yeah, distort the measurement of the success of the campaign. So after this, um, or, or after this, uh, after I have shown this to you, um, uh, the so the preparation work is finished now, and finally it's time to go to our Mautic. So in Mautic, I created a custom field called PMA in which the respective address number is then saved. Um, this is um, it's it's important to activate the is unique ID option. Um, because I can use this to tell Mautic that if a visitor visits the website with the URL parameter PMA, then Mautic should look in the Mautic addresses to see whether this ID is present in an address record. Of course, I imported also addresses to the postcard recipients into Mautic along with a unique address number in the PMA field. When a postcard recipient scans the QR code or types a link on the postcard, um, I will see this in the contact history of the respective Mordic address. Here in the example, I see that I've in, imported the address on April, April uh, 29. And after the postcard has been sent, I see the corresponding website call. Here you see it a little bit better. Um, I see that the parameter PMA352 is used. So um, Mautic then uses this to assign the visitor um, or the, the website visitor to the respective Mautic address set. Using the parameter PA1, I know which postcard campaign the visitor comes from. And the parameter QR, yes, tells me that the visit was triggered by a QR code scan. With a different Mautic address set, um, there is, of course, a different number after the PMA value. So here's the QR, yes, is missing after lead PA1. So I know that this time the URL was typed. In order to have statistics on how many of the recipient responded to the postcard, I simply used contact segments in Mordic. So the number of imported addresses were in my small uh, use case um, 876. And in another contact segment, I selected the addresses that typed the link 
In my example, so there's um, 38 contacts. So this means 4% of the recipient addresses. Um, what, um, but what, what was much nicer is that um, 129 addresses scanned the QR code to so 40% of the addresses, which is very high. In total, 176 um, recipients responded out of 876. So in total, 90%, which is very, uh, which is a very high rate for postal mailing campaign. I don't know um, how much the typical uh, response rate are out of Germany or out of Europe, but in Germany, normally a response rate here around one to two percent is is already good. So of course. Um, it, it how, how much the response rate is depends also to to who you send the, your postcard on and how the text is. Um, of course, I had the advantage that the target group was 100% clear. And um, as a hobby bike beekeeper, I'm also part of the target group myself, and I'm very familiar with it. Um, and back to Mordic, in, in order to display the response statistics for all QR codes and scans in Mordic, I applied a suitable filter to the contact segment. So um, in Mordic, I used visited X URL contains lead PA1 and PR yes. And for all recipients who typed the URL, um, as filter, I used uh, something similar, um, which, which uh, was um, the URL contains lead PA1 and visited X URL does not contain QR, yes. And now my Mautic has, um, has recognized all postcard recipients and thus also locks all website visits. Uh, so everything is now in place to use the power of Mautic. And if you know how, um, if you know, um, through Mautic, who receives the mailing and scans the QR code or access the link, um, what can you do as follow-up campaign or as, as reaction? So for example, I used a lead scoring in my Mautic. So if a recipient was on certain websites, um, for example, several, several times, I used Mautic to give points. And, and I sent called the uh, contact who received already enough points. Um, likewise, you could, for example, do, um, do something similar in your company. For example, you can say, dear Mautic, um, if somebody has enough points or visited this website or this, um, just send an email out to a sales rep um, a salesperson of your company and tell, uh, tell him uh, he, for example, should call contact 4205, um, for example. So you could um, could also have additional postcards or letters sent out automatically via Mautic if the contact has not done, uh, for example, action Y within time X. And for example, um, if you are not allowed to send an email because you do not have an email opt-in, um, in Germany, you are allowed to send post mailings to everybody, um, but email you are only allowed uh, to send to persons where you have an opt-in, of course. So the possibilities are very diverse, especially in combination with online marketing. And at the beginning, I talked shortly about my online marketing book. So if you're here and um, um, you, you understand German, you can get it on uh, 208 pages. I describe uh, all the most, most of the important thing um, you should know before implementation. Also, there are some um, infos and pro projects about Mautic, but of course, this is only for the German-speaking person. So, um, if you if you can speak German, you also can, of course, scan the QR codes. They also have a um, have a, um, an audio book if you don't want to want to uh, to read it, but. Um, if you don't speak English, you, of course, you also can contact me, perhaps I uh, can help you uh, with a similar uh, campaign in your country. And of course, um, you will find my contact details at the website. And I hope uh, my presentation contains some useful things. And um, if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them. So just type it in the chat or, or 
use a QAA function here. Okay, okay. Yes, um, QR code on the back of the book cover as well. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> a QR code can be used everywhere. And the best thing is, as my re my recommendation is always, um, always um, have a tracking at the QR code so that you know where the customer or the leads are coming from. And, and if they are on if they are on a book, on a postcard, or here on a PowerPoint slate uh, slide, you can use it. Yeah, I think it's very easy uh, and convenient, uh, convenient also like to use it and scan then go to the particular perspective, right? Instead of giving just a link or link is like with type it or something like that. It's so, okay, really a uh, good option. Like yeah. Uh, I think we don't have much question from the audience. I have one question. Uh, mm -hmm. Which article Motic campaign could be useful in combination with the postcard? Like mm. I think um, also one thing I didn't talk about is um, in online marketing, um, you can do a lot um, with split testing. Means, um, for example, you can you can so you can use two different postcards, and you can use Mordic for split testing. You can test if if the design if if two different designs of postcards. Um, if design A or B is working better, or you can use two different textes. And um, you can use Mordic for this, and um, you can track it like like I showed it. And I think it's the same. The present pr as uh, the principles, um, I think, are always the same. And it, if if you do Facebook marketing or email marketing or or post mailings here, split testing, conversion testing is, in my opinion, is always the same. Only the the the, the medium is changing. Or, Okay. And if you understand the principles, you can use it very good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for answer. There is one more question is there. I think uh, do you use any additional CRM to Motic and how you make predictions mm -hmm. in them? Yeah, um I, I used um um I have <laughs> I'm also a fan of open source. Um so I, I a long time I used Dolly Bar. I don't know if it's it's if it's internationally known, it's or it's an RP software and also has a CRM software. Um, you can also can create invoices and all this stuff. And um, yes, that I'm mainly using. I, I I tried a little bit with Shaka CRM, um, but mainly I'm not. Um, I don't really need a long um, CRM history. For me, it's important. Um, for example, is the customer or is the lead interesting? And uh, in Mordic, I use a lot of the tech functions. So if yeah. the if the Mordic context, for example, visits a website one time, three time, often they get a tech. And if they, if they have the um, if they have tech interesting three, for example, I use Mordic uh, to to mail an um, employee of me to say to him, hey, please call this address. Uh, he seems to be interested in some something, but yeah, right. me, it's not interested to or, or not so necessary to track all emails and and we are doing mainly online marketing. Um, yeah, so yeah, so I think addition to addition to Matthew's side, uh, like since the Mautic is open source and you are anything to make any changes in the code, right? So you can you can build integration using the plugins, a Mautic plugin, and uh, you can. Uh, Integrate to the uh, any, any CRM or any other software also which you want to do. Like an example, like uh, I did a uh, long back integration with the dialer. So there is an automation dialer we used to uh, call the dialing, right? So that dialer also, whenever the calls happen, it automatically we used to pump for data into the Mautic by the this is lead got called or lead got called, called twice. Like that, these are the life cycle we used to pump into the, the Mautic by using the integrations part. So if we have built mm -hmm. an API. Which was exposed to the uh, dialer system. Uh, dialer mm -hmm. system was having one cron job, which was getting the details from the database and then pushing it into the modding. That's how it that mm -hmm. came So, like any any integrations, uh, that's the beauty of the modding, also, right? Any integrations, you you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the one more question is there. Uh, was it only one time be physical mail campaign, or do you plan other physical campaigns? 
Mm. Um, it's it's um, uh, that was the first time I used it uh, in combination with tracking. But from an online marketing company, um, I also I already used um, post mailings, and they work very good because, uh, for example, in Germany, uh, there is so much advertisement with Facebook, YouTube ads, and all the stuffs, and there are so many companies which say I don't want to see more advertisement, and if you send them a postcard via post mail. They, there are a lot of companies you can't reach with more, in my opinion, with more than online marketing. They don't use Facebook. They don't use uh, YouTube ads. For example, they, um, they are offline companies. They are um, they are offering um, services around house building and all this thing. And they are very traditionally. And my company, which offers online marketing, I already uh, send out. Um, post mailings and I will increase it because the combination here with Mautic, I can calculate everything and I don't care if I give money to the German post which sends out the letters or to Facebook or YouTube. Uh, for me only uh, the costs per lead or per sale costs a uh, uh, matter and with this technique I showed you today I directly can and can calculate which a lead costs me. For example in Germany um, the printing of a postcard it costs three uh, euro cents, yeah, and and sending out the postcard in Germany um, costs uh, thirty one cents. So uh, for below forty cent, you can send out uh, automatically a postcard to a company, and after this you don't have any additional costs. So um, and then I also can calculate. I send out, for example. A thousand postcards for about 40 cents. I have 400 euros, and then with this technique, I can calculate. Okay, I look in my Mordic and I see I have, for example, 100 leads, and then I now 400 euros divided between 100. So each lead would cost me four euro. And with this technique, it, it's for me, it's not important if it's Facebook, YouTube, or, or whatever. And in Germany, um, I think it's, it should be the same. Um, I think you are from UK when I see it right here. Um, you should also um, get addresses. In Germany, there are address broker. For example, I can buy for about 700 euros one time um, 3 million German company addresses and for this small amount. And then I can say, okay, I send out 10,000 postcards to the first 10,000 uh, companies multiplicated with the about 40 cents. I look at the feedback and if it's good, the next 10,000 postcards can go out. And you can, I think in, in, in every country there, country there should be an address broker also where you can say, I want to get addresses from a special branch or something from what you are interested in, and then you can use, uh, can use it. And the most important thing you can combine online marketing with offline marketing. And if you do it good and right and with the right text, um, I think it's a very good business case to get new, new leads and new addresses and of course, customers. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a very, very practical way to explain how this marketing can work and mm -hmm. how the, the personal touch to the marketing also goes right. That, uh, the, I think the audience will like this uh, patients like uh, they are uh, right. So yeah. by this way, like uh, thank you very much for this insightful session and sharing your real life examples with the, all the honeybees and uh, postcards. Right, it was very 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 informative and helpful uh, session. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And with this, I think we are ending the sessions. Uh, I will hand over to the, like we'll just end the session and go to the next closing session of uh, today's. And end okay. of the conference. You so thank you everybody and always a nice modicon. And perhaps we we'll yes. see you again somewhere. <laughs> Bye together.